When you think of Rutgers football, you think of... Wait, what do you think of? I don't know, when I think back to the last eight years since they joined the Big Ten, I can only recollect that first year they had Gary Nova and they went eight and five, a string of random starting quarterbacks and some pretty bad defenses. But man, since 2020 when Greg Schiano returned to the program, he's brought a style and personality to Rutgers football. We're living in a time where the Scarlet Knights are climbing their way out of a hole, reestablishing a tried and true culture, and are once again becoming a relevant team in the FBS. My name is Kevin Redfield for the Dropout Sports, and let's get right into it. All right, but hola, hola, hola. Before we get right into it, I just gotta ask y'all to like this video and subscribe to the Dropout Sports YouTube channel. All right, now without further ado, let's get right into it. To get to where the Scarlet Knights are now, I want to start with them hiring Greg Schiano, the first time around. In 2001, Rutgers was in a tough spot in terms of football. They hadn't had a winning season in nine years, and they were struggling mightily to keep up with their new Big East companions like Virginia Tech and Miami. A change needed to be made, and with the previous coach gone, the program brought in a highly sought after man to be their new next coach our guy, Greg Schiano. Schiano was seen as a young but up-and-coming defensive coach who had experience in college and the NFL. He served as a defensive assistant and defensive backs coach for the Chicago Bears and was part of the revolution that was going on at the University of Miami in the late 90s, early 2000s. In his two seasons as the Hurricanes defensive coordinator, he paved the way for those legendary Miami teams by establishing a brick wall defense that didn't allow points and could hitch a hard while doing so. He coached up future NFL starters like Philip Buchanan and Dad Morgan, as well as one of the all-time greats, Ed Reed. In coming to Rutgers, Shiano sought to make his mark as a head coach, and although it took some time, he did just that. After some lackluster seasons at the beginning of his tenure, Shiano finally found some success in 2003 when his team went 5-7, which was when he was finally getting the guys he recruited into games and it definitely showed. The starting quarterback, running back, and tight end that season were all sophomores and those guys on the offense took gigantic leaps, having an almost two touchdown difference per game over the previous season. The defense also allowed under 30 points per game that season, and that was the first time they did that since 1994. In 2005, Shiano and the Knights had their first winning season in 13 years, but he wouldn't stop there. Also, this was the first season when Shop was introduced, which if you don't know yet, I'll get to later. The 2006 Rutgers Scarlet Knights. This season was the highlight year of Rutgers entire history as a football team besides their first year ever. They finished with an 11-2 record, ended the season ranked 12th overall, and had the only week in their history where they were ranked in the top 10. The offense was led by future NFL star running back Ray Rice, who had taken the starting job from previously established starter and fellow future NFL back Brian Leonard. That year, he rushed for 1,794 yards and had 20 touchdowns, both of which were program records that he would break the next year. The passing game also had some young talent that would flourish in future years in program-defining quarterback Mike Teal, future NFL receivers Kenny Britt and Tequan Underwood, and long-snapping legend Clark Harris. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the top 10 scoring defense they had that featured the dynamic duo of Jason and Devin McCourty. The next five seasons of Shiano's tenure would see sustained success with four of the next five teams having eight wins or more. Even after he left for the opportunity to coach in the NFL in 2012, their new head man, Kyle Flood, who had previously been a part of the program since 2005, had a great first season with a 9-4 record. But unfortunately, that season would mark the beginning of a depression for the Scarlet Knights. That year, the Big East Conference disbanded, which left the program in a state of disarray. Rutgers would join the newly formed American Athletic Conference in 2014 and had a less than ideal 6-7 record. But after one year there, they accepted an invitation to play with the big boys in the Big Ten. For what their reputation is now, their football future started bright with Flood and company attaining an 8-5 record with a bull win over North Carolina. But that bright light would be blown out just like that. 
In 2015, Kyle Flood was part of various misconduct scandals and multiple players were arrested on criminal charges. The scandal surrounding the program, as well as the regression to 4-8, and eight, led to Flood being suspended and eventually fired that season in 2015. Rutgers was once again in disarray, and their decision to correct the trouble that came with Kyle Flood may have actually been an overcorrection in hindsight. Likely looking back at some recent history as to what could work for the era, they decided to hire Chris Ash in 2016. Ash, much like Shiano, was a defensive coach, and more specifically, a defensive back specialist. He had over 20 years of experience as an assistant coach and was part of four Big Ten championship teams, including the 2014 National Championship Ohio State Buckeyes. The thought was that the program could embrace the defensive focus that made them a competitor in the 2000s, but that was not what happened at all. Ash would go 8-32 in his three-plus year tenure, and although there was no scandal surrounding Rutgers, there also wasn't any positive press either. The program was seen as an unworthy Big Ten team, and boosters were threatening to pull seats and funding if Ash wasn't fired. In 2019, when they fired Chris Ash for poor performance, they hadn't won an interconference game in two years. Something needed to be done. Someone needed to come in and revitalize a once celebrated program. And as you probably know, there was only one man for that job. Good old Greg Schiano. Just like in 2001, Schiano was given the chance to revitalize the Rutgers football program his way. The way he did it back in the 2000s. With that infamous chop slogan that I mentioned earlier. In what has now become synonymous with Rutgers football, Shiano first used the term back in 2005 as a way to revitalize his team after a bad loss. He recounted a story told by a sports psychologist back during his time in Miami, where a man is stranded in the woods in a dark forest, and he has two options. He can either curl up, give up, and die. Or he can pick up an axe, pick a tree, pick a point on that tree, and start chopping away until he's onto the next tree. It's a metaphor used for continued focus, dedication, and the ability to look forward and not back, all of which are hallmarks of Shiano coached players and Shiano led teams. With the new head coach and the new slogan in place, the Rutgers football program turned everything around almost instantly. In the first game of their 2020 season, they beat Michigan State 38 to 27 which was their first interconference win since 2017. Think about that, 2017, my God. In their next game, they almost came back from a 16-point deficit in a close loss to 17th-ranked Indiana. And in their third game against Ohio State, number three ranked Ohio State, they showed off some trick plays and raised eyebrows around the country. That year, they went 3-6, and six, and since they only played Big Ten opponents, I wouldn't consider the season a step in the right direction. 2021 was another step towards the light, as they went 5-8, and eight, which was the first time they won more than four games since 2014. Greg Schiano brought back the legitimacy of Rutgers defense and hard-nosed style of play. They were even selected that year to have a chance to replace Texas A&M in the Gator Bowl against Wake Forest. So what's next for the Scarlet Knights football program? Well, no one can say for certain, but I see a bright, bright future waiting for Rutgers. First thing I want to point out is the progress they've made in recruiting. In recent years, they've been sitting around the middle of the pack in the FBS in terms of recruiting rankings. But in 2021 and 22, they've just been a different breed. In 21, Shiano nabbed three highly touted four-star recruits including possible 2022 starter Gavin Wimsat. That previous year, he had the 39th ranked class in the nation. And this year, the Knights have only gotten better, as they're currently the 31st ranked class, with four four-star recruits. And again, look, I'm not saying we've reached the point of Rutgers' pure dominance. I'm just saying that the trajectory is most certainly there. We've also seen Shiano use the transfer portal to his advantage since his second tenure began. When he began in 2020, Rutgers strategically used the portal to get key offensive and defensive players that would start that season and even the next one. And this past week, we saw one of the most underrated transfer prospects, wide receiver Taj Harris, commit to Rutgers. 
And what's even more is that they needed offensive line help, and they've gotten four transfer offensive linemen so far this year. When you're looking at the circumstances that Greg Schiano was given to be in this situation with Rutgers football, you've got to give him his praise. In 2001, he took a team that could barely keep teams under 30 points, and he made them into a defensive juggernaut. He also coached up NFL players that kept the legacy going into their NFL days. And in these past two seasons, Greg Schiano was given ashes, told to make a fire, and he's doing just that. Thank y'all so much for watching. Just a bunch of dropouts.